open your Bibles. We're going to move uh, quickly here. Uh, once again, I want to uh, stay true to what God is saying in the, in the, in the moment. I want to do a little bit more talking and teaching uh, today. Uh, in the book of Mark, in the 12th chapter, and uh, thank you all for reading verses 41 through 44. Mark in the 12th chapter, starting at verse number 40, 41. When you have it, let me hear you say, Amen. Amen. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a thirdly. And he called unto him his disciples, and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, if I say abundance, abundance. but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Mm -hmm. May God have a blessing to the reading and hearing of this word and that today have the courage to teach the people of God say amen. 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 If you all pray with me and pray uh, for me but for a moment I want to teach from uh, the thought when little becomes much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. I want to uh, talk about and have you to consider with me the subject when little becomes much. The woman in our text is never named in the Bible. Mm -hmm. There are only two accounts of her act of giving in the New Testament. She is mentioned here in the text that we're going to look at today, and she's also mentioned in Luke, the 21st chapter. And both chapters give the story in only four, everybody say four. four. Everybody say four. four. In only four verses. In the Lord's eyes, this poor widow gave more than all the others put together. Although her gift was by far the smallest, the value of a gift is not determined by its amount. Somebody should get the punch line there. But by the spirit in which it was given. A gift given grudgingly or for recognition loses its value. When you give, <laughs> when you give a gift of any size, we must realize that pleasing God should be our ultimate desire with everything that we do. Let us look for a few minutes at this passage, and I want to talk about or share very quickly from three points of view, and, and obviously uh, a text of this magnitude, you can't do a full justice, but I just want to drop some seed of consideration, um, specifically today, and thank you to all the ladies and uh, those uh, men who were so inclined. Uh, even from the posture of tradition to be in your white today. Amen. Uh, amen. amen. We want to thank God for our women's ministry and uh, certainly pray for their time yesterday. Amen. And so I want to be very intentional in, in sowing it to the ground of the women uh, today. Uh, when little uh, becomes much. I want to talk about uh, three perspectives. I want to talk about uh, God's perspective. Uh, and then I'm going to talk very briefly about uh, God's perspective of the people in general, those who gave in total. And then lastly, I want to talk about the giving of the woman or the widow woman uh, herself. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's look at, uh, amen, number one, let's take a look at um, 
and notice a few things about God uh, from our text. Uh, the first thing that I want us to take note of from our text is that God is interested. Turn to somebody and say, he is interested. He is interested. That God is interested in our giving. Uh, I, don't, I don't want us to be mistaken by that. God is interested in our giving. God has given to each and every one of us much. Yes. Um, it is our, our, our mindset and it is uh, our normal thought process, especially even in the context of the text, that uh, we will assume and even uh, take the posture that uh, our giving is focused simply on the giving of money or the giving of substance. Mm -hmm. I want to challenge our thinking and broaden us uh, in our perspective because God has given us more than just money. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Is anybody praying with me? Yes. Uh, certainly God has been good to us and here's the thing uh, so we can just deal with it and maybe get it out of the way. Here's the issue of tithing. Tithing is not about equal giving. It is about equal sacrifice. Yes. Uh, that God has blessed each of us differently, Brother Dalton. Uh, everybody is not sitting behind the desk. Everybody is not working in the labor field. Everybody is not a professional in the sense that they may have uh, be a, a doctor, lawyer, or whatever a call professional. Everybody can't be an athlete and get paid. Somebody say amen. Uh, but whatever God has given you to do, God expects in your relationship with him to be faithful. Amen. So it is not about equal giving, it's always about equal sacrifice. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. But God has blessed us uh, in tremendous ways. Uh, some of us, God has blessed us with health mm -hmm. and uh, strength. Yes. Um, uh, I pray and believe that all of us have a roof over our head, oh, yes. whether it's amen. a home or an apartment or a condo. Uh, many of us choose to and can and thank God that we have some means of transportation. We Amen. got here today. We didn't yeah. have to walk here. There were times in which folks had to walk to church. Amen. Uh, but the thanks be to God that uh, even if it's a hoopty, uh, Amen. Amen. Even if it's a hoopty, how many of us know we can thank God for hoopty? Amen. And so, uh, so God has been good to us in, in myriads of ways. And, and what God wants to know is, are you really appreciative of what he has given to you? God's expectation is that uh, when he gives, that there is a giving of return. And that's the nature of relationship, true relationship, that true relationship is give and take. Right. And the wonderful thing about God is that God never expects anything of us, Marie, until he first blesses us. Right. Mm -hmm. But after he blesses us, then God expects us to give That's according right. to how he has blessed us. Right. Mm -hmm. In the context of the text, we know that the widow woman gave the two mites, and we'll deal with that in a minute. But in the larger perspective of what God wants us to know today is that you have so much more that you can and should be given to God. So many of us here that we come on a routine basis, we, we come out of habit even sometimes. We come out of uh, old school word, uh, they used to talk about rope behavior, rope meaning repeat. That we come out of repeat behavior, but we ought to come here because I'm, I'm operating out of the premise that God, you've been good to me. Yeah. And the least that I can do yeah. is come yeah. and give you praise yeah. and worship and adoration. Uh, if we didn't come here for any other reason, we ought to come here because we want to thank God for another day. And how many of us are appreciative for another day's job? Oh, yeah. that God has kept you. And so here's the thing that we need to understand. Uh, you can't buy God's love. Uh, you can't buy God's grace. God is not concerned about the status of your bank account. And so contrary to even what the church, and, and we have to take ownership of some of this nonsense, is because we put so much emphasis on money, and we stop putting emphasis on what God is concerned about. And that's so. 
And so, and so I wanna wanna challenge us to broaden our thinking today that when when we when we understand that God in the context of the text is very interested in our giving, yeah. that uh, he expects us to give, that he wants us to give, but he's concerned about more than just our money. Uh, I believe it was, was Paul who penned it this way, and he said, present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable services. So God is not asking us to do anything above and beyond. And here's the good news, is that God will never ask you to do something that he hasn't done first. Amen. Come on. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because we can just skip everything and go right to Calvary, and then that, then, then, then that, then the con tour, somebody said, then the conversation's over. You know, when we start talking about Calvary, that that just shut all that noise down. You know, well, well, you know, God, I can't, you can't afford not to. Ooh. What do we know about God? So God is uh, interested in our giving. Secondly, I believe that God is more, if I say more interested, more. I believe God is more interested in the attitude or the motive of the gift that we give. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Turn to somebody and ask them, what's your motive? See, God is concerned, see, see it's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. God is concerned about the state of our heart, the condition of our heart. We can give everything, we can give it all, you know, and, and it can be included in the other stuff that Paul was talking about as being done because our heart was not right. If you look at the text, and I'm, I'm gonna cut through it and get us out of here. When you look at the text, you'll find that Christ talked about, or, or the text talked about uh, those who gave in total. It talked about the, the woman who gave the two mice, but it also talked about those who great, gave of great substance. Right. Now, here's the thing that you need to know in the text. In the text, he never degraded those who gave much. All right. mm -hmm. no. He did not put them down for the much given. But what he paid special attention to was what the widow woman gave. Because when you read the text, the text said that they gave out of their abundance. Does that make sense? They gave out of their abundance. How many of you uh, have read or how many of you have studied uh, the, the scripture that talks about Ananias and Sapphira? <laughs> Do I got about seven people? Yeah. It said that they sold, watch this, and, I, and I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, that, that they sold a piece of property, they gained the money from the sale of the property, that, that, that Ananias came in a form of godliness, can I take that liberty? He came in a form of godliness, and he gave, uh, he, he gave an offering. He gave a portion of what he had received from the sale of the property to the men of God. Does that make sense? That, turn to somebody and say, it's in the book. Now, when he gave what he gave, and, and, and how many of us know that this is symbolic of, of sometimes how we do things today? That God blesses us and instead of doing right because we want our relationship with God to be right, we do what we deem to be right. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that fair? Yeah. And so the scripture says that, that, that the man of God came to Ananias and said, and, and, and you can check my math, you can read it for yourself, and, and I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, he said, Ananias, why would you lie to the Holy Spirit? To the rest of my say, it's in the book. It's in the book. <laughs> so now, he didn't make it personal. See, we, we make this thing of giving personal. Like, like since, since God has, has blessed me and, and, and allowed me, in spite of who I am, to be a servant in the kingdom, a servant leader in the kingdom, then now all of a sudden I have a certain order over folks that I can just call them and you're accountable to me. You're accountable to God. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. One more time, Bishop. Yeah. 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 I feel pretty good today. Yeah. 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 
But you're accountable to God. And, and that, does not, that does not diminish my responsibility as either shepherd or pastor or leader or whatever it is. As leaders, it does not diminish our responsibility to speak truth Amen. and to hold people accountable for what's right in the kingdom. Amen. But ultimately, what we have to do a better job of is not making people feel bad that they let me down. Go but on, I, yes. I wish somebody told me. Come on, I wish somebody told me. And so in the text, not, not our original text, stay with me. Where, where Ananias and Sapphira sold the property, and the Ananias came, gave the offering, or gave a portion. The response was, look at what the man of God said to him. He said, why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? <laughs> See, you're not lying to, you're not lying to the leadership. You're not lying to the man or woman of God. You're not lying to somebody. You're lying to God. Because you need to understand that God gave you the land in the first place. Somebody talk back to me. God sent the buyer to buy the property. I would turn, to, turn to somebody and say, God's in all of it. See, God's in all of it. Don't think that nothing that happens to you, don't you believe that God is not in all of it. So God sent the person to buy the property, and then God allowed the person to have the means to be able to give you what was right for the property. Yes, yes. Is this making sense? Yes, yes. The Bible said that, that when, when Ananias heard these words, and here, we don't talk about, when he heard these words, the Bible said he fell down dead. Right. Yeah. It's in the book. Right. Right. Yeah. See, you can't lie to God. That's right. And then don't think that's, that nothing's going to happen. That's right. That's right. Amen. We, 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 well, well I, I don't know, I don't know why my battery went out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I gotta, get, I gotta get a new air. We gotta get a new air conditioner at home. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is this making sense? Yeah. And so, in in modern days, Jacasia, no. Thank you, Jesus, for grace. Yeah. I wish somebody should have got happy right yeah. there. Thank God for grace and mercy. But that does not mean that the principle is still not in place. Here's what I'm trying to help us understand. That the principles of God are still alive. That when you lie to God and when you don't do what's right, then you've got to realize you're going to be held accountable for lying to God. How little becomes much. God is interested in your motive or your attitude as to why you give. Look at what, what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. He said, every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves what? Everybody can finish this one. God loves what? A cheerful giver. A what? A cheerful giver. Now, don't show up. Watch it. Don't show up. And I, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example because the important thing is application. Mother yeah, here teaches yeah. me that all the time. Right. Application. Application. Watch it. Don't show up on Saturday morning at 6 30 and I got to hear you complain. Oh, Is that a fair question? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, help us out. Go ahead, baby. Stay, Stay home. Yes. Stay home. Get your sleep on. Go ahead. You know, I mean, yes. you know. Yes. That's it. Have some cocoa puffs. <laughs> Whatever it is you do. Whatever you do, do that. Whatever, do that. But if you come, come with the right spirit. Come being happy to see your brother. Come happy to serve. Does, does that make sense? See, God is concerned with our motive. He, he's concerned with your heart. Why are you giving? And again, this is more than just a money thing. 
And anything that you give in the kingdom of God, anything you give to the kingdom of God, God wants to know what is the condition of your heart. What is your motive? Are you giving it because you want somebody to pat you on the back? You want somebody to stroke your ego? You want somebody to give like me a check? Get on the edge. Oh, get on the edge right there. Because yes. everybody want to chat. Yes. Everybody say next subject. Yes. Amen. God is interested, in number three. God is, I'm still talking about God. God is interested in our sacrifice to Him. Yeah. Amen. He's interested in our sacrifice to him. The, 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 the original scripture that we read in Mark, 12 chapter verses number 43 and 44, talks about the quantity of her gift. It talks about the two mites, and it talked about the equivalent to the furthering. And so it talked about that, and it compared that to the, the portion of the abundance that the others gave who were able to give. Yeah. And we, we have to understand that 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 there was a, a observation and there was a consideration of what she gave in comparison to the abundance of those who give. Mm -hmm. there, there are those who, who give of their abundance yeah. and but they're not giving true to their abundance. Mm -hmm. That's one issue. Mm -hmm. There are those who are giving up their abundance and they may be giving in quantity. Mm -hmm of the abundance, but their hearts are not right. Oh, okay, okay. Is this making sense? Okay. But here's a woman, and, and ladies, I want you to hear this, because uh, one, and I, and I want to expose it again, and again, and again, and again. One, one of the, the spirits, and one of the demons, one of the strongholds that is prevalent in this house is, is uh, esteem, how we esteem ourselves. Ladies, yeah. how we esteem ourselves, yeah. how we feel about ourselves, yeah. how we appreciate ourselves, yeah. how we value ourselves. Yeah. It's, a, it's a common battle, a common war in this house. Oh. We, we're going to we, we're gonna be very transparent, we're going to be very open, because again, we can't get victory unless we expose That's what's right. fighting us. Right. And so when we take a look at that, this woman did not come in the midst of all these people who had a substance and say, I bet not give because I don't have what they have to give. Uh -huh. she, she wasn't bound by that. Right. Because of her heart condition, because of her relationship with God, because of her concern for somebody other than herself, she had a conviction to say, all that I have, I'm going to give unto yeah. you, God. And how many of us know that when we give of ourselves, no matter how it is, in comparison to someone else, it excites God. Yes. And God can take your little bit and he can multiply it for the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. So what am I saying, ladies? I'm saying whatever you bring to the table, bring it. Whatever you have to offer, offer it. Because in God's hand, little becomes much. Because in God's sight, as long as your heart is right, whatever you give, God brings glory and honor because he realizes that your heart is right. And so, so the time is out. I want to rest. I want to choke the life out of. I want to extinguish. I want to mortify. I want to get rid of. I want to send back to the pits of hell any spirit, any, any, any viewpoint, any perspective that who you are and what you have to offer is not of value. That's a lie from the pit. You are wonderfully made by God. You are made unique by God. And whatever you bring to the table, God told me to tell you, bring it on. Turn to somebody and say, bring it on. Turn to another sister and say, bring it on. So we got to learn how to encourage our sister. We have to learn how to sow a positive word of affirmation to our sister and say, bring it on. Whatever you got, bring it on. Whatever you have, bring it on. Whatever you have to say, bring it on. Because it takes every viewpoint in order for God to be glorified. Is this making sense? Awesome. Let's move. Number two. Number two. Let's take a look. Uh, very quick, and this will be, be very brief, shorter than, than the other two. Let's take a look at uh, the a view of the people. Let's take a look at the view of the people. And, and, I, and I shared 
uh, this a little bit earlier, but I want to make sure that I, I touch it as best I can. Number one, when we look at the people, we see that those who maybe by the tech standard or by our standards were rich, that they were generous mm -hmm. in their giving. Mm -hmm. It did take time to say that out of their abundance, they did give a portion of their abundance. Does that turn to somebody say it's in the book? So, so there were those uh, who had a substance and had a means and it says that they gave. And again, I want you to understand that, that there never was a put down of those who had much. He just did not reflect on those who had much because of the heart and the giving of this woman. Does that make sense? Amen. What does that mean? That means to us that, that be thankful for what you have. Yes. Be thankful for what you have. But also be true to what you have. Be true to what you have. That's right. And, and, and know that if God has blessed you with much, yes. then you ought to be grateful mm -hmm. to say, Lord, thank you for blessing me with much. And you know what? Thank you for giving me the opportunity to yes. give more. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of you. Yes. Yes. But, but, but it's the truth anyhow. Yes. If God has blessed me with much, if God has blessed you with much, then we all we are and here here's here's the thing that we need to understand is that our giving is not just confined to Sunday morning at eleven. It's not confined to them. Sometimes, sometimes you may be in the grocery store and the Spirit of God will speak to you, somebody who is in front of you or back of you. Yep. That that you don't you you never seen them again, that's right, that's and right. you you don't know why except just being a, of a surrender posture to God yeah. to say, okay, Lord, that's what you said, do then that's what I'm gonna do. Sometimes you help somebody else out right. just because that's what the Spirit of God told you. Right. You may be at the gas station and getting gas and just walk over and put gas in somebody that's else's right. car, not because they asked you to. But that's because that's what the Spirit of the Lord led yeah, you to do. Yeah. And so again, it's a hard thing yeah. that we have to be grateful that God has blessed us with much. And we have to, in accordance to those who are in the text, we have to be willing to give of our abundance. It's unfortunate, and we have to, we have to, we have to say it the way that it is. It's unfortunate, that just that in these days of time, that God has been very good to many of us. Amen. That God has given to many of us more than enough. Yeah. And what we want to do is we want to give the Lord a portion. That's right. We don't, we don't give God what's right, yeah. and we feel that we're justified, Cynthia, in just giving Him a portion. Okay. But I'm here to tell you that God is going to hold us accountable yeah. for everything. Thing that we do. I'm not here. here I'm not here. Uh, the, the board is not here. And, and, and Lord, forgive us for any time uh, and, and, and a big, big transfer, any time we've operated in that posture. We, we can't be the police. All right, now. We can't be the giving police. Go ahead, Bishop. The reality is if, if your relationship with God does not convict you to be true to your relationship right. with God, right. then, then, then that's between you and God. And, I, and I'll let you all work that out that's when the time is right to work that out. But, but it's, it's not our responsibility to be the giving police right. and, and to check and make sure that you, you gave every last penny that you were supposed to give. The Bible said that this woman was in the midst of many who gave, that there were many people, people of substance, who had to give. And the good news is that everybody was given something. The church said that. One of, the, one of the other things, and this was just a, a side note that came to me, is that uh, that it was good to see that, the I'm going to call them the rich or those who had a substance, it was good to see that uh, that which, which allowed them to get of their substance did not uh, cause them to stay away from the house of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Richard. Because what will happen is, is, is we will put in so much overtime and, and we will work so hard for the man and then we're too tired to come and, and worship God. Uh -oh. And 
and, and that and that's that's an unfortunate reality. I'm talking about the church today now. Yeah. That that sometimes you know we had a long work week. You know, had so much overtime. You know, and so I woke up. You know, I was just tired. You know, and so uh, and watch this. And so we'll send our tithes and we'll send our offering, put it in the mail and and other and and. You know, thank you, Lord, for that, uh, you know, in this context. Mm -hmm. But God is not concerned about your money more than he is you. And you need to understand that your money is not a substitute for you. <laughs> and so God, God wants you that 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 we cannot forsake the assembly. Right. In, uh, in, in, amen. amen. We, we cannot forsake the assembly. And so the, so the thing that, that I looked at from the text is that here were people of great means who did not use excuses for how they got their great oh, means boy. as an excuse to say, and I can't make it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm here. I'm available. Lord, thank you for blessing me. And I want to be here to give back. Yeah. And we ought, to, we ought to be able to see everybody giving back to That's the right. kingdom of God right. in every way that they can. That's Does that make right. sense? Yes. Let's close. Number three. Last, last thing I'm doing. The woman. One of the things that I noticed from the text is that, first of all, the woman was more interested in God and other people than herself. All right. she, she, she knew or trusted Marie what her giving was going to go to. Uh, folks ought to be able to, to trust in these days and time. And again, I'm not trying to put any, uh, I'm just using that as an example. I'm not trying to put anybody on blast. I'm not trying to attack mega ministries or any specific ministry. But, but one of the reasons why people are so gun shy, one of the reasons why people are so shell shocked in these days is that there's too many examples of, of folks not saying the, the given used in the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm wanting to buy a Bentley, or I'm wanting to buy a new plane, or I'm wanting to, to do to do this, that, and the other, instead of doing that which was of, of direction and concern for God. And that is taking care of the poor, taking yeah. care of the, the less fortunate, uh, making provision for ministry to those yeah. who are in need. Yeah. And that's, that's what our giving ought to be going for. Yes, we have day-to-day -day, uh, things that we have to do, as De uh, Deacon LeGrand noted. We got to keep the lights on. Yeah, that's a reality. Yeah, we got to keep running water. That's a reality. But it, it, it ought to be more than that. It ought to be, there ought to be substantive and very intentional uh, initiatives and ministry going forth in order to help those who are in need. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I believe that this woman trusted by faith that the work of God was going forward and she was saying, even though I don't have much, you know what I'm saying? Somebody's worse off than I am. Yes. Yes. And I believe that's the spirit that God desires for us to embrace in these latter days. That we, we have to realize that, no, we may not have everything that we want. We may not even have everything that we need. But we all to Rebecca, be grateful that God is blessing us. And that God is blessing our families. And if we're blessed, then whatever we have, we ought to say, God, I'm going to give it to you first. Yeah. Yeah. Is this making sense? Yeah. Yeah. And the wonderful thing about giving to God is that when you, how many of us in here, this is an old question, but how many of us in here know that you can't be God's gift? Amen. Amen. That the more, you know, we sing that song going off the time every now and then, the more you give, the more he'll give to you. And that's not just a song, Deacon Stag, that's true. That you cannot be God's giver. That you you can't you can't you can't bless somebody fast enough. You don't have enough to outgive God. God, God can bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. And I believe that the woman knew this, that there was something in, in, inside of her that, con that convicted her to say, even though I don't have much, somebody's worse off than I am. Yes. Are you hearing me today? Yes, and so because of that, and, and it's much like the, the lad that had the two fish and five loaves, how many of us know that when you give that which seems insignificant, that when you give that which seems not to be much, yeah. that God can take your yeah. giving yeah. Yeah. and he can multiply it for yeah. his glory. Yeah. Somebody say for God's glory. For God's glory. I, I believe not only was she concerned about others more than herself, I believe that 
She completely was unselfish, and I believe that she wanted uh, purposely to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. And, and, and I want to I want to leave us with that thought. I want to leave you, and thank you for your pain. I want to leave you with that thought today, that that we have to get beyond. And, and I and I'm not trying to purposely call us selfish. You have to take away from this this message what applies to you. Mm -hmm. uh, our vice chief uh, bishop says this all the time. He says, if it don't apply, let it fly. Yes. And so I, I want you to do that today. But, but if you know in your heart of hearts that God has been good to you, if you know, if you know that you know that, uh, that it could have been, been some other outcome and it could be mother some other type of way, but God is still making provision, then I, I want you to go back and, and, and meditate on this text. And I want you to, to pray into who this woman was and what she did and and, and, and ask the Spirit of God to reveal to you again as confirmation the motivation behind what she did because what little she had, she gave on purpose. She did she wasn't bound, mother, to say, I don't have as much as another. She wasn't worried about somebody laughing at her or talking. To, and, and and again, you know, uh, in real real life, you know, we have people who come and what they do, Brother Anthony, they ball up their money. No, and I'm, not being, I'm not being funny. I'm, I'm, not be, I'm not being funny. They ball up their money. And they ball it up because they don't want people to see what they get. And I'm here to release you from that. Stop that. Because God is not ashamed of what you give as long as you gave from your heart. Stop being concerned about what other people say. And, and, and here, here's, the, here's, the re, here's the reality of it. Folks ain't even paying attention to what you get. And, and again, I'm not trying to be funny. I want you to, I want you to hear God now. This, this is not trying to be funny. I want you to hear God. Folks are not even watching what you're giving. That's the, that's the enemy playing with your mind. To make you think that 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 somebody is focusing on, well, I want to watch and see what she, I want to watch and see what he, folks are not watching you like that. But the enemy is playing with your mind to make you think that folks are watching what you're giving, and you ought to be, you ought to, you ought to march up here, you ought to march up here with pride. And listen, if you if you're putting a, 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 a if you're putting two pennies in the play. If you know that you know that in this season, how many of you know that 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 you're just in your season? Yeah, yeah. And that there's a new season on the horizon. I want to talk to some folks who have a future hope. Yeah, yeah. But I understand that I'm in this season, but I want you to know that there's a new season yeah. on, the, on the horizon. Yeah. And so whatever God has given and entrusted you with in this season, God wants to know, will you be faithful with that? So you ought to walk around here boldly, you ought to walk around here proud, and you ought to walk around here with the right heart saying, Lord, I'm giving you my very best. Amen. And, and I believe that, that in, in this text, that her giving, that her heart had given, that she would be viewed as a type of Christ. Amen. 